What's up guys, Dom the Hypnotist here. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about what are some of the benefits of hypnosis and how this can apply to you. Now, I figured the best way to do that is to share with you some very notable and famous people who have used hypnosis and what they use hypnosis for. Now, before we get into the video, guys, make sure you subscribe to the channel for more content like this, like this video, and also leave a comment down below. We're gonna start picking one lucky winner every single week to do a free session with me. All right, guys, so without further ado, let's jump into the video. So I'm here on Mind Body Hypnotherapy, and we're gonna take a look at 30 famous people who have used hypnosis. As you can see here, some familiar faces, Ben Affleck, Matt Damon, Britney Spears, Ashton Kutcher. So let's see here. So Aaron Eckhart, drinking and smoking. Uh, he's the guy from Batman. He's in a bunch of other movies. Guys, if you want to see if you qualify for a free one-on-one -on -one Zoom consultation, go ahead and click the link down in the description. Now, we're not going to be offering this forever, so if you go down there and it's not there, that means you removed it. So take advantage of it while you can. Uh, drinking and smoking aren't typically something I help people with, but I know that it does work. I have heard from other therapists. Huh, Adele, I don't know why the picture's not popping up here. Adele to quit smoking. Albert Einstein to access deeper depths of creativity. This is one of my favorite things to use hypnosis. As a matter of fact, I do this every single day. I tap into the creative part of my mind so that way I can bring videos like this to you guys. So definitely, guys, if you have an opportunity to do self-hypnosis and meditation, I'd highly, highly recommend it. Ashton Kutcher, personal development and quit smoking. I love personal development. My life revolves around personal development. Ben Affleck quit smoking. Britney Spears quit smoking. Bruce Willis, interesting. Bruce Willis had a stutter. You would have never guessed had you known, uh, had you known that, right? Uh, David Beckham, career success. You can either be motivated by the stick or you can be motivated by the carrot. And what that means is when you are motivated to do something, you could be either motivated because you don't want to get hit by the stick or because you want the pleasure of tasting that carrot. And it's funny because if you think about this in terms of horse racing, what are they going to do when there's a short burst that they have to do with the horses? What do they do when they have a short burst in a race? They whip the freaking crap out of the horse. Now then what happens when the race is over? The horse is tired, it's, wor it's, it's tired, it's overworked, it doesn't want to do anything anymore, and it's going to need a few days to recuperate. As opposed to, now let's say if you were going on a long journey, would that be an effective way to, 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 would that be an effective way to motivate your horse to run? Absolutely not, because it would get so tired and worn out, the horse would probably die. So a better way to motivate the horse, a better way to motivate the horse for long-term results is to put a carrot in front of it, right? And then it just slowly, steadily walks towards the carrot, walks towards the carrot. And that was what you, and that's the same thing in our life, isn't it? Rather than having to race and then take a break, race and take a break, wouldn't it be so much nicer to have constant and consistent motivation all the time? Now, guys, this isn't just true with career success. This is true with our health, right? Typically, we'll wait to the very last minute when we have diabetes, we're overweight, we our arteries are clogged, and then finally the motivation kicks in to get in to get in shape, right? But by then, it's typically too late. So we'll go over a couple more here. Ellen DeGeneres, quit smoking, uh, Fergie, weight loss and overeating. That's something that I, I love helping people with. I'm very passionate about uh, getting in shape in myself. Uh, sports hypnosis, as you guys know, I work with a bunch of athletes, UFC fighters, NFL athletes, Olympic athletes, uh, career success, hypnobirthing. This is actually interesting. Uh, apparently, I, I've never done this before, but apparently there are specialized hypnotists out there that when you're going to have a baby, they actually hypnotize the mother so that they feel no pain. So when they birth the baby, they actually hypnotize the mother so when, the, so when they birth the baby, they feel no pain at all. Um, I was actually thinking about doing it when we had Bailey, but I was a little hesitant because I, 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 I didn't have any experience with it. So uh, we ended up not doing that, but I always thought it was interesting. Uh, so a couple other people here, Matt Damon, quit smoking, Mozart, depths of creativity, Nikola Tesla, uh, Orlando Bloom, overcome addiction to chocolate. Hit that like button if you're addicted to chocolate and you need to overcome it, right? Comment down below as well. Uh, Samuel Jackson, quit smoking. Now, Sylvester Stallone, he actually, when he made the movie Rocky, he actually had a hypnotist on set to work with him every single day to help him perform at his absolute best. And I've actually worked with uh, quite a few actors uh, over my time. Overcome fear of pole vaulting, Tiger Woods. Now, Tiger Woods, his dad 
Actually, when he was in Vietnam, he learned how to do hypnosis. They were helping the they were helping the soldiers overcome their fears and PTSD and all these different things. And then when his dad came back, he actually started hypnotizing him uh, for golf performance at a very young age. Uh, Thomas Edison. So, so yeah, guys. So those are some of the main things that people use hypnosis with. They also one of the main things that I help people with is we're going to call it the A word, right? And the reason we're going to call it the A word is because. Uh, YouTube just recently did this thing where if you type this in or if you say it in your videos, for some reason it, it, it kind of dings you. I don't understand why, but it's the word that coincides with feeling nervous. So the A word and there's an N, X, you get the picture. So I help people out with that. Whether it's just overall, <laughs> I'm trying not to say the word, if it's overall nervousness, if it's social nervousness, maybe you have uh, something in your career, maybe your clients, and before you meet with them, you get those nerves, or maybe it's public speaking. That is actually one of the main things I help people with. Also, people who have anger issues, depression, sadness, anybody that's holding on to any negative emotions. And then my favorite, what we call limiting beliefs. So limiting beliefs are beliefs that we have about ourselves that hold us back from becoming who we want to become or becoming who we are supposed to be. So for example, if you believe you're not smart enough to do something, well, guess what? You're not going to be able to do that. Now, the only reason you believe you're not smart enough to do that is because somewhere throughout your lifetime, you developed that belief. And all of a sudden, that belief shaped your reality. If you believe that uh, every time something is going good, something bad's going to happen like I did, then that's going to affect every aspect of life. As soon as you start to have some success, if you believe that, that is what you will create in your reality. So guys, if any of this stuff resonated with you, I want you to click the link down in my bio to schedule a free consultation. Now, if you go down there and it's not there, that means we removed it. We're no longer doing it. So take advantage of it while you still can. All right, guys. So thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next video.